All right, business writing students, welcome back. So now that we've talked about emails, we've talked about resumes, the next thing to talk about is the cover letter. Now, if you're applying for a job, you may be asked to write a cover letter, and it is something that accompanies your resume. It is not simply recapping your resume, and I think that's a mistake a lot of people make, but it is a way to expand on things that might be in your resume. Now, real quick, I, I know that some people are sort of skeptical about, skeptical about the purpose of a cover letter, like, hey, what's the point? You know, a long time ago, that was just the way things were done, a cover letter and a resume for any job, uh, sometimes with an application. Know that definitely with more professional jobs these days, it's going to be a cover letter or an email that functions as a cover letter. So we're going to go ahead and dive into it here. So what is the actual cover letter? Well, in a nutshell, it is a short letter to a potential employer that serves as your introduction to that business. So from one of our readings this week from Career Education, I pulled out this little quote. A cover letter is a one-page letter that you submit when applying to a job along with your resume. As a persuasive piece of writing, uh, your cover letter will aim to convey to the employer why you're a great candidate for the role. So again, your resume is one page, your cover letter is one page. Those two things go together and work together to get you to that next step, which is usually an interview. Now, if we stick with that article from Career Education, we can start to think about the specifics, right? Okay, it's a one-page letter, but what needs to be in there? Or why are we doing it? So the first thing is that we are going to highlight our qualifications, right? Show how our skills and experience relate to the employer's needs. And again, that can be soft skills as well as hard skills depending, right? But the big thing that we don't want to do here is just recap everything that's in the resume. So avoid saying, I have, you know, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this, I have this skill, I have this skill, I have this skill. Really want to focus on your qualifications. Make sure that you showcase your motivation, right? Your enthusiasm for a specific position and the organization. Why do you want to work there? What is it about this company and this job? Now, I know that it's hard sometimes to be enthusiastic about certain jobs, but if you're applying for it, you want to think of it in terms of what's going to happen if I get this job. Is this going to be the best job ever for me or is it just going to be another job? And then remember that just like your resume, your cover letter is reflecting your voice and your written communication skills. If we go back all the way to the beginning of the quarter, we know that a lot of employers are looking for people with strong communication skills and that specific soft skill of communication and interpersonal communication. Knowing that, we want to make sure that our cover letter fully reflects our communication ability. Now, one thing before we kind of move on, uh, which is a caveat. Although, much like resume writing services, there are cover letter writing services, I would steer clear of those. And I would steer, steer clear of chat GPT. Like, let's just say, for example, that they got yours and they just ran chat GPT zero and they found out that you'd used chat GPT, you're out the window, right? You're, they're not going to consider you. But also, if you show up, unless you're going to use chat GPT for everything that you do within that job, they're going to quickly find out that you used some other thing to write. Okay, and then one other sort of quote from our reading, and this one is from Purdue Owl. A couple bullet points here. In your cover letter, you're going to explain your experiences in a story-like format that works with the information provided in your resume. So again, that's where we're kind of expanding and telling a story, right? People love stories. Uh, it will allow you to go into depth about important skills or experiences that relate to job requirements. So especially if you held a job that an employer might not see the connection, if you can explain the connection, that's going to work to your benefit. And then, of course, you want to show your employer that you are individualizing or tailoring this job application. The cover letter is where you can show you've done your homework. Do you have a personal connection? Is there something specific that you know about the company, etc.? And then again, it's a sample of your written communication skills. So we've seen that a couple times now. So again, just food for thought. 
as we go into this. Uh, so let's talk about the cover letter format. What is the format? Okay, we kind of have a sense of what it's for. It goes with our resume. We have a sense that it's one page, that it tells about our experiences and highlights our communication skills. So let's look at the actual format. So much like essays you've probably written in the past that have been, you know, five paragraph essays, this is relatively similar with a few adjustments. Now, you're going to you're going to have a heading at the top, and I would say that should be similar to your resume and as much as possible use the same font, the same font size, the same style. If you're using color, use the same colors so that they look like they belong together. Uh, and then you're going to have your contact information. Again, couple quick notes. <laughs> Don't use your uh, your gamer handle or gamer tag as your uh, contact information. Make sure that if at all possible, it's your first name and last name at whatever email service you prefer. A greeting or salutation similar to an email and very much like a uh, an email, we want to make sure it's to a specific person. Imagine you're a hiring manager and you open that cover letter and just says to whom it may concern, right? Um, or dear sir or madam. That's very generic. And the first thing that most people are going to think is this is just a form cover letter that you send to everybody. So the more that you can be specific, the better. If you can't because you don't know who it's going to, hiring manager or HR, human resources, whatever it is, would be the best thing to use there. Now, once we get past those kind of nuts and bolts, we get into the body paragraphs, right? We're going to do more on this later, but you're going to have maybe two, maybe three body paragraphs uh, and then a conclusion followed by your signature line. And your signature line is pretty standard. You know, what you do is type out your full name and then print it, sign it, and then you know, scan it or whatever you need to do. It does seem like a formality, but it's a nice extra touch when somebody goes that extra mile to make sure that their signature's in there. I mean, you can do it online now with, you know, a touchpad or whatever. So there are a lot of options there. Okay, so just for what it's worth, right? The way that I would structure it if I were to be writing a cover letter of some sort for whatever job. Same as before, right? Header, greeting, great. But let's break down those body paragraphs a little bit more because I would probably stick with three body paragraphs, again, knowing that whoever's reading it has limited time. So in my first body paragraph, my intro paragraph, my focus is really on capturing attention and explaining interest in a particular position and the company or organization. For example, when I applied to Shoreline, there were a number of things that I really liked about Shoreline Community College from the campus to the students to the faculty and people that I'd interacted with. So I tried to incorporate that there. Why Shoreline rather than Edmonds or Everett or North Seattle, right? Why, why this particular place? Then I would do one body paragraph probably, maybe two depending on the situation. And in the body paragraph, what I want to do is explain how my experience or background aligns with the company. What is the connection there? What makes me a good fit for the company and what makes the company a good fit for me? And then I want to show how I would be an asset to the company, right? What is it that I bring to the table that somebody else might not bring to the table, right? Is there a particular problem or conflict or challenge that this company is having that you feel like you can help remedy or help solve? And then in the conclusion, usually short and sweet, thanking the reader for their time and ending with enthusiasm. You don't have to go overboard with your thanks. You know, keep it simple. You know, thank you for your time. I look forward to talking to you in the future. Uh, something like that works fine. Okay. Um, basic formatting, and we'll end on this kind of, uh, oh yeah, signature. Okay. Um, and we'll end on this. So these are the nitty gritty details. I'll put these in the uh, assignment description as well. But you're going to single space your cover letter, which is different from most academic assignments that are double spaced. You're going to leave a space between each paragraph. You're going to leave a couple spaces, three spaces between your closing and your typed name. So that gives you space to actually sign. You're going to leave a space between your heading and your greeting. 
you're going to align uh, all paragraphs all the way to the left margin or indent the first line. And I would say in most business scenarios, they don't tend to indent. So just putting everything flush with the left-hand margin works, especially if you've got that extra space between your paragraphs. Uh, use standard margins. So that's usually a one-inch margin. And if you're using any type of word processing software, it's usually set to one inch margins. Just don't adjust those at all. And then center your letter in the middle of the page. So they're talking here about um, vertically rather than horizontally. Obviously you've got one inch margins on each side and you don't want to center align that text. What you want to do is keep your text aligned to the left hand side but you want to make sure that things are relatively spaced out on the page so that it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of white space. Now, if there's some extra white space at the end, so be it. Just resist the temptation to put a meme or, or something like that in there. And then sign your name in ink between your salutation, your sign off, and then your typed name. All right, so there you go. Uh, we'll end it there. If you have questions, comments, concerns, jokes, memes, or recipes, let me know. Otherwise, I'll talk to you all later.